Now these entities I'm talking about are talked about and mentioned in every ancient society under different names. Um, and these are interesting to me. Uh, this is what they're called by some Central American shaman, the flyers, just the name. We have the demons in Christianity. We have the archons, that, that is the name for these entities of the Gnostic belief and the Gnostic writings uh, from like 2,000 years ago, around that period and, and, and later. And the Islamic jinn. Because the way all of these uh, entities or phenomenon are described is precisely the same in effect. They're different names for the same thing. And uh, the archons, as the Gnostics called them, uh, were said to be made from luminous fire. The jinn from Islamic and pre-Islamic Arabia um, were said to be made of smokeless fire. And when you, you, you look at what's said about it, they're talking about the same force, the same phenomenon. So what is it? Um, the Gnostics are very, very interesting. Gnostic coming from a word meaning knowledge. Whenever Gnostic thinkers um, showed any sign of getting their point across and, and circulating their, their knowledge and their beliefs, they were slaughtered. I mean, that is just a, 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 a constant. The uh, Cathars that were slaughtered in southern France uh, ending up on the, the, the castle of Montségur in 1244, they were Gnostic thinkers. The people that ran the great uh, library of Alexandria with its half a million scrolls of ancient knowledge which the Roman church destroyed, they were Gnostic uh, thinkers. And as a result of this, very little Gnostic writing has, has, has made it through what we call history. But then in 1945, a place called Nag Hammadi in uh, Egypt, a sealed jar of Gnostic writings was found uh, hidden. And from that has come a fantastic, um, fantastically greater understanding of what the Gnostics were talking about. These were mystics. They went out into other levels of reality. Uh, what we, in many ways, we, we call them shaman today, uh, many of them. Um, and uh, this is what they talk about in these writings. They talk about Lord, the Lord Archon, or what they call the Demiurge, and the Archons that serve the Demiurge and uh, uh, the, the Lord Archon, as they call him. And they relate this to the Judeo-Christian Yahweh Jehovah God. They also relate it. In, in effect to the what people call Satan or the devil as well. They say that these archons created the physical universe that we see, but not the earth, the sun, or the moon. And it's interesting that those three bodies have tremendous connections geometrically and mathematically, which none of the other planets do. Anyway, Archon um, means prince, ruler, authorities, and it has the connotation also of being from the beginning, because the, um, the Gnostics said that actually the, the, from the beginning of this uh, solar system that we uh, see and experience, they have been here because they were actually the creators of it, apart from the, those bodies I'm talking about. They talk about the, the Demiurge being a fake god that created the physical material reality that we perceive, um, and they talk about these entities being inorganic, like cyborgs, like robotic. Um, and these writings are about 1,600 years old, a bit more maybe, and yet they knew that in terms of the relationship between the Earth and the rest of the solar system, the Earth was alive and organic, and the rest of the solar system was basically not alive and inorganic. How did they know that? Because they were able to get out there and were, were very, very knowledgeable. Um, uh, and that's why they were attacked by that which didn't want that knowledge circulating. This, in effect, is a, very much a, a, the feeling of what they describe as an archon world because the archons have no creativity, as humans do, and therefore their world is stark and, 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 and ugly and uniform. This is another wonderful uh, symbolic picture of an archon world, an archon reality. And um, that's because these writings say they have no 
I think the direct translation is no intentionality. I, I put it another way, no creative imagination. And the writings uh, from the best part of 2,000 years ago make it clear that they envy humans who have this creative um, imagination, this the ability to create. Uh, like I say, they, they describe the Archons as cyborgs, a robotic race that can imitate but not innovate. They call it, in a, in a translated word, counter-mimicry. Put simply, if you gave them a blank sheet of paper, they would know what to do with it. But you give them a, blank, uh, a sheet of paper, rather, with something on it, with something created on it, and they are able to distort it and twist it. But they, cannot, they can mimic and imitate. They cannot create in, the, in that sense. Interestingly, they also use the word fantasia. And in that sense, what they're saying is that these archons, jinn, different names, but I'll use the word archon as a consistent, um, have the ability to create fake realities, to distort reality, counter-mimicry, to give people the view or the feeling of a perception that seems real but isn't. Mind parasites, they possess the mind and influence the mind in a negative way, particularly in a negatively emotional way. The one word they say that can absolutely describe the Archons is deception. And also they say that one of their great means of operation, modus operandi, is to inver invert everything. That's what they're doing, counter-mimicry. Uh, they are inverting what is already created so it becomes something else. And it's no accident that uh, what are the great forces that worship these archons within human society, what we call Satanism, uh, use uh, inversion as part of its symbolism. The inverted cross, the inverted um, five-pointed star. And so I've used this quote before in talks, and, and from this archontic uh, perception, it becomes even more relevant. Michael Elner, who said, just look at us. Everything is backwards. Everything is upside down. Doctors destroy health, lawyers destroy justice, universities destroy knowledge, governments destroy freedom, the major media destroy information, and religions destroy spirituality. Everything inverted. This is classic. Politicians, knowingly, some of them, most of them unknowingly, that are promoters and... Uh, pushers of the archontic agenda, they are famous for bloody lying, inversion, inversion of truth. This is a quote from the uh, English writer Noel Coward, who said, quite rightly, it is discouraging to think how many people are shocked by honesty and how few by deceit. Such is the level of deceit in our society. One word to describe our, the archontic influence, deception. So this force I talked about earlier that operates behind the crazies in politics and banking and business and media ownership and all the other stuff uh, is this archontic force, which takes many expressions as I'll come to. And this is absolutely massively significant. The Gnostics talk about something called HAL in relation to these archontic manipulators. And HAL means, in, in our translation, simulation of a virtual reality. A reality that appears real to the decoder, but is not actually real. It's a fake reality. Um, and given what I've been talking about for a few years now, the Gnostic texts describe reptilian entities in relation to being an expression of this archontic force, and 1,600 bloody years ago, they described grey entities and they describe them as being expressions of the Archons and they say these grey entities are like an unformed baby or a fetus with grey skin and dark unmoving eyes. They were around thousands of years ago. We think they're a modern phenomenon. No, no, this manipulation has been going on for a fantastic amount of what we call time. So, you know, one of the, another, you know, what can we ridicule, what, what's the latest thing to ridicule Ike for? Well, right, let's get a list. They must be adding to it by now. He's been talking for a while at that Wembley place. Um, 
But one of the things they ridiculed me for is the idea that repti reptilian entities are behind this manipulation of human society. And uh, uh, people can deny their existence if they like. I do not give a shit. They exist. <laughs> this, this is, um, this is a, a Spanish artist called Robert Illimos. I spoke in Barcelona, was it 2011, something like that. And um, he was introduced to me because he'd had an experience which he, you know, thought I might be able to explain. Um, he was into none of this stuff, never heard of me, never heard of the reptilians or anything. But he had a, a partner who uh, lived, which was Brazilian. So he was in Brazil in 2009, I think it was. Yes, 2009. And um, he's out on his own painting the landscape in his own unique kind of way. He's got his easel and stuff. Uh, and he's on his own and he's painting away in this landscape. And he said, then this came down in front of him. Bit of a surprise, I suppose. Um, <laughs> And he said uh, it was uh, completely closed up apart from this window. And there were two entities in the window. And he said this thing came down and just stayed there for ages. He said, I don't know if I, I was taken aboard. He said, I have no recollection of it. And of course, he's got his bloody easel in front of him. He starts painting it, this chap. Um, and what he saw at the window were these reptilian type entities just staring at him, looking at him. Um, and these entities exist. I mean, the, the what he has painted is also described and indeed painted by other people all over the world who've had the same ex basic experience of these entities. And I had to bloody smile um, that this year, the, the, the Daily Mail has been taking the piss out of me over this for ages, like all the other buggers, uh, and they run a perfectly straight story, headlined, Welcome to our new Lizard Overlord. Studies suggest alien worlds could be full of super intelligent dinosaurs. But because it's a scientist saying it, it must be bloody true. But Ike, he, he, he left school at 15, he can't be right, oh bloody hell.